Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1073. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about two tangible assets that Warren Buffett likes. Now, this article came out a little over a month ago, but I don't think that makes it any less relevant, especially since I did a podcast a little while ago about another billionaire who also likes the same two tangible assets. That podcast was podcast 803, where John Malone, the billionaire chairman of Liberty Media, talked about currency devaluation and why he liked these particular two assets. And that was because, quote, hard assets look attractive as the unprecedented coronavirus stimulus is poised to lead to a depreciation in currencies. So what are the two assets that I'm talking about? I'm talking about farmland and multifamily housing. In addition, John Malone added a third tangible asset, and that was precious metals. But we know that Warren Buffett has been saying he doesn't like the fact that precious metals don't pay a dividend. So while he did invest in gold, he did it through investing in a mining company, Barrick Gold. But that's not mentioned in this article. I just thought that was very interesting that these two very wealthy, very influential investors are buying the same assets. Malone says, I've bought irrigated farms because commodities were cheap and farms were at a low cycle in value. And I'd always wanted to have some irrigated farming. So now I'm growing potatoes, he said. Cycles are something that billionaires follow and I wrote about in both of my books. So what does Warren Buffett have to say about his two favorite tangible assets to invest in? Well, first let's talk about farmland. According to Buffett, quote, if you said for a 1% interest in all the farmland in the United States, pay our group $25 billion. I'll write you a check this afternoon, Buffett says. With inflation running hot, the prices of agricultural commodities, including corn and soybeans, are soaring to new highs. And we have seen other commodities skyrocketing in price as well, such as cotton and coffee. For us as individual investors, it's a little bit more tricky to invest in farmland, but you can do it through real estate investment trusts. And there are some investing services where you can invest in farmland and earn income from leasing fees and crop sales, as well as any long-term appreciation on top of that. That also was covered in podcast 803. The other tangible asset that Warren Buffett mentioned he likes are apartment buildings. He said the same thing about apartments as he said about farms. Quote, if you offer me 1% of all the apartment buildings in the country and you want another $25 billion, I'll write you a check. It's very simple. He likes them because whether the economy is booming or in a recession or whether we have high inflation or no matter what's going on, people need a place to live. And because housing has become so unaffordable and with low inventory and interest rates on the rise, renting has become a more popular option for many people. Again, for us investors as individuals, it's a little bit more tricky to invest in apartments, but there are some apartment focused REITs, real estate investment trusts that you can invest in. And there are some limited partnerships that people offer that you can become an investor in that partnership and have the general partner manage the projects. So you have limited liability and some limitation on the profits that you receive as well. But it is a way to have access to a pool of multifamily real estate or apartment buildings. Last week, we got the news that payrolls increased by 528,000 in July, which was much better than expected and a sign that the jobs market is very, very strong. What was expected was an estimate of 258,000 new jobs and wage growth 
also was up. Average hourly earnings jumped 0.5% for July and 5.2% from a year ago. That also was higher than estimates. Because of that good news, traders started pricing in the fact that we may need to raise interest rates more because things are so strong. However, remember that the Fed was raising interest rates to combat inflation. And since we have oil prices down, that was the largest contributor to inflation that we had seen. And those oil prices are actually below where they were before Ukraine was invaded. So oil has come down quite a bit. And this week we should get the consumer price index number, which will tell us if inflation has in fact come down from 9% that we saw last month. Of course, these are all rear view looking numbers about things that have already happened. What I try to do for us is look at indicators going forward to see if we have signs of things cooling down, of inflation backing off a little bit. We have seen that with commodities prices coming down, with oil prices in particular coming down. So with interest rates already having gone up quite a bit, the real estate market having cooled down quite a bit, but the economy still staying strong and all of that economic data that came in last week and we heard from most of the S&P 500 corporations most of them were doing very well with their earnings because they've been able to raise prices and make more profits from higher prices. So they're actually making greater profits, some of them. Now, some of them are struggling, but most of them actually reported very good numbers. If we have strong employment, supply chains start to ease a little bit, we've got the price of oil and commodities easing, some of the Fed's work has already been done by the economy cooling down a little bit. So we'll see what the CPI number comes in at this week and if that can tell us if inflation is still rising or if we've seen the peak of inflation and that's behind us. That's gonna be huge news for the markets, so we really wanna pay attention to that. But overall, what I look at is economic news. I look at what corporate earnings are because corporate earnings are the most important thing that are going to determine whether stocks go up or down and stocks as a group make up the stock market. So I'm looking at what are earnings, what are corporations saying? What kind of guidance are they giving for the future? Are they giving an optimistic view of the future or are they telling us they're having a tough time? Since most companies last week, the vast majority in the S&P 500 were giving us positive news, that tells me that earnings are going to continue to be strong. They're seeing the consumer be strong and that is good for the stock market. So while we will continue to have pullbacks and some scares and information that's not always positive, I do believe in general we will see the stock market move higher and that rip roaring bull market is still intact. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And if you'd like to read more about cycles, check out either my first book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now. And by the way, men love that book too. Or check out my most recent book, Three Steps to Quantum Wealth, The Wealth Heiress's Guide to Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies. Both of them, I talk about cycles and the importance of cycles and how the very wealthy understand and use cycles in their investing. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.